Hello everyone, welcome to the world of marketing. It's an online community of seasoned marketing professionals and enthusiasts. In today's warm cast, we would be talking about will digital marketing replace the BTR or the traditional marketing norms which has been going through the centuries. To commence this warm cast, let me introduce Shreya Krishnan, who is the moderator of the session today. And she's also heading the MarkCom at Anviti Insurance Brokers, and she has been an expert with the 14 years of experience with corporate groups and startup uh, startups, helping them uh, run their marketing and communications functions, calculating their businesses to success. Welcome, Shreya. Thank you so much. Great to be here. So thank you so much, Kanika. I'll take over from there into the conversation. And we have uh, two very exciting speakers with us here today who are going to explore this conversation around traditional marketing versus new, new age marketing and all the more relevant currently, especially in the time of Corona and COVID, because the entire way uh, life has turned around and changed. And the new normal, as everybody's calling it, is something that we're going to look into. Uh, from a point of view of PTL, from a point of view of digital, what is it that we have in store and what's going to come uh, through the nuances of this? Uh, in conversation with Mr. Duby K. Anthony, Marketing Head GCC and the rest of Africa, Godrej Consumer Prior, uh, welcome to this conversation. He's got several years of experience across segments, Unilever to uh, Toyota to name the brands, and he's worked with them on multiple levels and layers of new age and traditional marketing uh, mixes. And we have Mr. Billy Aikinen, uh, digital marketing consultant and co-founder Skyware Technologies. He's also a digital marketing consultant and expert. So we have two uh, eminent people from two different parts of the world who are actually going to be taking us through a series of this. Uh, Naveen, can we have uh, Zubi's slides up, please? And we can have Zubi take over and walk us through the nuances of what the new age has in store for us and what is BTL going to look like and in the immediate future and what's in store. Can we have uh, Zubi? Thanks, Shriya. Thanks a lot for introducing me. Uh, well, uh, thanks a ton for giving this uh, opportunity to all of you. I would like to talk about a few truths in the BTL marketing, which I have learned over a period of time in my uh, during my experience. Before I would like to talk about the BTL, I would just like to give you a little importance of what are the key parameters which has to be taken in marketing, which is basically one, the need of the consumer. Consumers have various needs. In addition to needs, the wants of the consumers, the wants gets drived into demands, which converts into value, which converts into value. Could you just go to the next slide? Which I was just talking about the needs, the wants and the demands. Uh, when it comes to uh, the three steps for any business to grow, which it has to be run through three uh, through the penetration drive, which is more users, more usage, higher pricing. For example, the Colgate, more users, more usage, and the higher pricing, which gradually takes up. So, which is basically a ten percent growth is is derived by ten percent more users getting it with your brands get getting closer to your brands. Can we go to the next slide? The BTL, which is below the line, has one key thing, which is route to market. One has to be very much focused in trade. That is, consumers are having direct contact with the product on the shelves or in the retail markets. And that is the place we all have, we as a marketeer or a salesperson has to focus to ensure that we get the maximum throughput in terms of sales. There are various parameters which are taken in the route to market thing, which I would not be getting into details because of the uh, uh, time frame. However, during the question and, question and answer session, I would be going through in detail. Uh, one, one key thing is 60% of the decision of uh, happens on the shelf. And what is seen is what sells the maximum. Can we go to the next slide? Uh, if you know one thing, the key thing in uh, BTL is the right product at the right place at the, with the right promotion, with the right engagement. That is when we are there to make a dent against the competition. And 
second thing is the planogramming or the assortment just to give you a simple live example if if we are selling a dow hair cream if the hair cream is kept next to the soaps uh, or the beauty section people would not understand that it is a dow cream hence we have to keep the dow cream next to the hair category that is called as assortment in simple terms the next evolved one is the uh, in each category we have to segment the category which is for example the soap section which has the beauty the care and the health health is basically your life boy the care is basically your dove and the beauty is connected to your lux uh, rest of the mediums of communications uh, are are the secondary part first is the btl which which has started from ages till date the rest of the mediums support the btl to en ensure that there is a good offtake uh, and one most can we go to the next slide one most important thing in btl which is every day is a great execution which is called as the edge every day, so it's not unlike the atls or the social media which we do on and off btl is an activity which we have to do on and on in the trade to ensure that we ex, uh, we excel against the competition and shoppers turn to become buyers in the long run uh i would now further take it to billy to take up in terms of how important is social media uh in link with btl thank you so much zubi um so if you look at the nuances of btl it's about how high touch are you in conversation with the brand that is actually presenting um the product to you it's also in conversation with your store floors and your you know the way the shops are aligned so there's so much of high touch which is involved whereas digital is a medium where conversations and engagement are what drives uh, you know the consumer towards the brand so willie if you can take over and walk us through the context and nuances of digital and what the digital in the current context is going to mean for brands uh, that are looking at moving away from traditional retail because of access issues currently towards uh, the future oh thank you for having me um nice being here um can you open this slide um we are talking about um is data next btl so so we are going to look at some statistics and also see the relevance of digital in the marketing and we can attest to the fact that in today's world of marketing um 90 percent of our communication are done online and this can only be done through digital so on the course of this um presentation we are going to look at some statistics and we are going to see the relevance and how the digital really affect the btl marketing so let's let's check our slides. Okay, so let's just go to the background so that we can flow with some statistics and really see the effects. Okay. Currently, um we have 60 percent of um world population using internet, and that brings us to about uh, 4.7 billion people globally and to that effect you can really see the importance of digital in terms of the marketing and going through the statistics there you can see that we have three million three hundred million new users coming online for the past 12 months if we calculate the statistics here i put it from um 2019 april 2019 to april 20 that's um, a month ago so um you can see based on these statistics you can see that we have an average of 821,000 new users coming each day on the internet with the huge number coming on the internet we can really see the effect of um digital on the btl so um going down let's look at some other statistics i have here so that it will guide us on our discussion i also put there at the second point there you can see that we have 4.5 billions of the internet that's 92 percent 92 percent of the number uses mobile devices to browse so you cannot segment this by not at least align with some of the statistics another one we have there is um 5.5 5.16 billion user unique 
unique mobile phone users globally. We are going to see the statistics which I draw from some some years back. Um, the next slide, let's look at the next slide, which we can see the global internet users I'm talking about. Okay, you can see here from this diagram here, um, you can see we have 4.57 billion total number of global internet users. You cannot do marketing without communicating online. You cannot have a successful online campaign or a marketing campaign without talking about internet. Okay, we can also see that the internet presented the second one that we have the 59 percent, 59 percent of internet users globally. Okay, so let's look at the next slide, which I talk about the social media, which on this conversation, we are going to see how we can and use the social media to enhance our BTL communication. So social media users around the world globally stand at 3.81 billion globally. And that takes us to about 49% of the total population. So tell me, can you run a successful campaign without penetrating to your users using social media. Okay, let's look at the next slide, which I showed some numbers of um, phone users. Most of these users that are connecting to internet, we can see a large number of them, a large number of them comes through mobile phone. Like I stated earlier that we have about 5.1 billion users, unique users that are using mobile phone. So most of the communication consumption, consumption on the internet, are basically for now a large number of percentage are going through using mobile phone so we are going to looking at these statistics from um 2019 2019 we have a focus of number of users worldwide we stand at um currently we are this is 2020 we have about um 6.6.95 be um, forecast that we have up to 0.7.33 and i can bet you based on this pandemic this number will skyrocket next year which will be 2000 and 2021 this number will jump from this average statistics we have okay so um let's look at um we are here and how it works and how we can using okay so um what is btl for the interest of our audience so let's look at briefly um the, the meaning of btl btl you can see from my slide there um is below the line advertising. Now, below the line advertising, we have above the line advertising, but we are concentration now, we focus on the below the line advertising, which we are talking about the effect of, of that digital. So based on this, you can see that we said here, BTL is known as below the line advertising. It's a marketing strategy where products are promoted on a more personal level than ATL. That means that you can communicate directly with your consumer and the consumer can have a direct contact with you using BTL. Okay, BTL activities really include um, the direct mail campaign. For example, we can use a mail, we use an email campaign to communicate um, with our consumers. That's a direct BTL using digital. We can also use a free, free sampling exhibition that's going outdoor and also targeting search engine marketing. For example, now I have a product, I want to target a particular specific class of people. I cannot do that without using BTL. Now on the H, um, ATL, I can put, though ATL can help me in terms of um, exposure in terms of exposure of my brand but in terms of targeting the unique customer i'm looking for 
is the BTL that can give you the target you are looking for and the, the number that require, and you can measure it. So with BTL, you can target your customer and you can measure your result at real time. Okay, so let's look at the, why we are talking about um, the BTL. The next slides. The next slides. Can we move to the next slides? Okay, the next slides I have, I'm um, talk about the, why the BTL. I said is a direct point of contact between customers and brand. It create brand awareness, reaching your target audience. And with BTL, you can reach any target audience based on your segmentation. Um, make your brand stand out. You also build your brand credibility and create an impact on the old product at first hand. And promotion involves direct targeting, like I earlier stated, direct targeted campaign to a specific prospect. So in this case, you are not wasting your money. Now, like I explained earlier, I'm coming after this pandemic, marketers will be facing a lot of problems in terms of communication and brand will reduce their budgets of marketing. So as a marketer, you really need to harness digital when you are talking about when you want to reach your target audience, you need to harness digital on your campaign communication. Without that, you are going to waste because resources for marketing will be limited. In that case, you need to explore avenue that can help you to reach your target audience at a lower cost but with a high return on investment so you cannot do this without btl that is why we said that digital is the next btl thank you thank you so much really uh, there you go ladies and gentlemen we have looked at the nuances of uh, numbers and what these numbers mean uh, that direct connection that you want to build with your target audience floor or in a mall or wherever that was is now quickly transitioning into storytelling online and using digital as a virtual medium to reach out and access uh, your consumer. Uh, Zubi, I'm going to switch back to you and I'm going to quickly ask you about the changing dynamics of DTL currently because currently I think in the last two months, brands have had to you know, continue those conversations and grapple with the issues around how do you manage the lockdown? How do you manage the virus, sanitation, health, the pandemic in question? So can you tell us a little bit about the nuances and the evolution so far uh, that you have seen? Perfect. See, if you see a couple of months back or a couple of uh, the recent years, we were always facing a lot of challenge from the retailers. Retailers used to charge a huge lump sum of amount for visibility. Visibility is the key for uh, BTL. To, to get a space, you have to. They used to charge a lot. Hence, today in the current uh, situation, the entire thing has moved to variable costing. Variable costing in the sense, we they buy so much of stocks, we pay retail rebates with respect to the amount of stocks and in terms of the turnover. And that's the focus which each company is currently focusing on. Because earlier we knew that businesses were assured if we spend so much. Tomorrow, we are not sure. The current situation, we are not sure how much of returns we shall get. Because end of the day, in BTL, one uh, BTL will be only successful if the ROI, which is the return on investment, is beneficial. Hence, I we personally feel that everything which we were doing on a FC, which is a fixed cost in a BTL, has to move to variable cost. Then only the BTL activities can sustain and can be uh, beneficial in the longer run. Okay, great. Thanks, Zubi. Uh, Willie, I'm going to ask you the same question, but uh, from your point of view of looking at the markets around the digital context, what do you see that has changed in the last couple of months since the time the pandemic has hit us? And what do you see brands have changed in terms of their uh, way of behavior, both online and offline? So the same thing, basically, how are the nuances changing because of um, you know what's happening around us? Willie, can you hear me?
Okay. Come again, your question? Uh, Willie, my question to you is, in the last two months since the pandemic has hit, uh, what do Hello? you see that are the, yeah, what do you see that are the changes that brands have incorporated or the way the dynamics on digital and their digital presence has changed uh, looking at the situation that the pandemic has created across the world? Okay, um, like we normally advise um, in our communication, um, uh, this pandemic has really exposed. There, are, um, sometimes ago, maybe a few years ago, when you talk to brand that um, digital is the way to go in terms of uh, communication and marketing, they always um, seems not to really understand. But this pandemic has really opened a lot of people eyes on um, using the digital platform in terms of communication. You can see now most of the brand now. Everybody are working from homes now, you can see. Everybody are buying product now online. Even to the last item you least expect. You go online now, you can get whatever you want. So for you to reach your audience, and this trend will still expand even after this pandemic. So the strategy, the brand, brand need to bring some digital strategy that will help them. They need to embrace digital strategy in their communication to really sustain the the consumer trend that is changing right so embracing a new digital strategy to uh, look at the change and look strategically on how to leverage this change for a better conversation zubi that brings me to the next question it brings me to you uh, to ask you two months down uh, with the relaxations coming into the fore where are we now what does it look like in the current context and what is it that brands are trying to drive now uh, in terms of messaging, in terms of activities? Because some brands are still managing to do some amount of interventions, BPL. So tell us a little bit about uh, what you are seeing in the current scenario. Well, okay, I would um, like to start with the, well, I would like to start with the first question, which is where are we now? We are all at our homes, which is uh, the great part of it because of the fact that uh, it gives us a it gives us the time to rewind ourselves and see where are what are the mistakes we have done of course we have every marketer has done positive things as well as negative things uh, in the, in their business activities and this is the time for us to rewind and see what are the mistakes we have done and if you see the retail outlets today uh, yes there are situations where uh, consumers are not walking in people are scared but for, I have also seen when I went to the big carry fours or the uh, all any any of the big brand uh, big retail outlets, it's full. So it's not that it is it's it, it's a standstill. There is still movement. People tend to read exactly what are the key benefits of the product mentioned on the pack, which will never ever come through digital. Digital, yes, will support or enhance, but however. The real touch and feel. Every consumer needs to touch and feel the product to buy the product. That will never come from the rest channels, but will only come through BTL. Hence, what we have to do in this, what we are doing in this particular period is we are go, going through various channels. For example, if you see most of the retail earlier to uh, to get a space on the online channel was quite expensive. If you need to go on any of the Amazon to place your products was quite expensive. However, today you can place it through retailers. Retailers, what they're doing is they buy the space from Amazon and in turn give to brands. So brands benefit out of it because uh, the retailers buy, buy it in bulk. And then that is how the brands, or if you see most of the brands are today, they're all online. It is not because brands are buying it directly from Amazon, Amazon etc. They are tying up with retailers and ensuring that there is visibility. So as a company, we have to ensure that we are there online as well as we have to continue doing the BTL activities. However, yeah, we can slightly reduce things like off shelf gondola displays or promoter activities can be slightly reduced. However, in terms of visibility on shelf, we have to be there because the minute this pandemic is over, we are back to square one with a better movement because we have to be fully aggressive post this because for example people who were out of the market for a while and was used to the online uh, medium 
once he gets back to the floor, he should remember what is uh, a Sony camera XYZ or a Lux, uh, X, a Lux Soap XYZ. They should remember that. And hence, we should ensure that we go all, uh, uh, we are there throughout to be a better marketer and a better brand to continuously support the trade. Okay, great. So some interesting insights there. The more things change, the more they stay the same. And some positivity in looking ahead and saying the fact that uh, the new normal is, is perhaps not going to change the entire dynamic of fabric, but is actually going to bring in innovation, uh, uh, you know, into uh, the various conversations that are being had. Uh, Billy, I'm going to flip over to you and ask you, have you seen or what are your uh, senses on where we are currently? on how brands are leveraging digital to bridge the gap between what is not happening or not taking off. Uh, so can you tell us that where we are now and what does it look like in the current context and scenario? Willie, could you hear, hear me? Yeah. Could you hear me? No, no, no. So uh, my question to you was, uh, Zubi was talking about how BTL will perhaps, um, you know, only have a hiatus and then come back into the fore because ultimately the touch and feel of a product cannot be compensated by a digital interaction. So from your point of view in the last couple of months and where are we now, you know, because two months are done, you know, some of the lockdown relaxations have come into play. People are coming back out into buying and into purchases. So where do you think we are currently? So where are we now? And what is the scenario looking like for the immediate future? OK. Uh, in terms of that, um, you see, um, when it comes to a marketing, there are, there are always a um, way to get to your customer. You need to understand your consum con consumer insight. You need to understand your customer very well. Now, I'm talking about having the feel of your product though coming online you need to create a kind of awareness that's when the awareness comes first you need to create awareness and when you build trust on your products if you have trust on your product you don't need too much um maybe um want people to really see the product before believing because um what we have what you already build the the customer you have previously can act as your ambassador and that's why we sometimes we advise some um brand have some reviews on maybe your website have some reviews so that your customer can build some reviews that will build some credibility on your brand so talking to a new customer or a prospect coming to your product seeing your product without even having a physical look at the product you will still go to the online and look at what people are talking about that your brand, what people are talking about that your product. If you have a good review of your product or and your brand, definitely you can also um have a good number of customers that will finally convert from your campaign online. Okay, great. So uh, there you go. Uh, in terms of looking at uh, digital and BTL, the connection. So I'm going to flip back to Zubi and Zubi, I'm going to ask you about where do you see the connection uh, or, you know, the, the marriage of digital and uh, BTL and what do you see are the leverages that the brand can draw from that uh, connection? Well, digital and uh, BTL has to go hand in hand. If digital alone is done, forget uh, today or tomorrow from the past itself, if digital alone is done, and if the product is not on the shelf, which I always, which I shared in the presentation also, if the yeah. product is not available on the shelf, do what you need, whatever pro ATL you do, whatever digital you do, it is, it is of no benefit. Digital is digital ATL, etc., is uh, an add-on or a support to ensure that off takes happen but the first important thing is your product has to be on the shelf and uh, that is what i'm i repeated sometime back also just because social media uh, just because online is happening if your product is not there on the floor today during the pandemic situation also people will forget you tomorrow hence digital and 
BTL has to go hand in hand. Uh, as you, as the question stated very clearly, they should marry each other and not get divorced ever. They should always be together forever. That's the most important thing about digital and uh, BTL. However, I I would also look at uh, uh, look at something like, for example, during this pandemic, many companies, many many companies have uh, entered into uh, launching sanitizers, launching masks, etc., etc., which is basically diversification of the business. While they are doing diversification of business, I, I was quite shocked. I wouldn't mention the brand name. There is a biscuit company who just outright went and launched a sanitizer. There is a there is a brand goodwill. When a brand has a goodwill, we should stick to that goodwill and we should deliver our promise. As a food product suddenly entering into Sanitizer is a big question mark for me. However, maybe it's a tactful manner to make some extra money during the situation. If you see, they are not going digital at all. They are not going digital or ATL because they are only doing a BTL drive during this period to ensure that they get an offtake. That's it. And make the make some extra money and may not sustain the brand. So as a company, we have to ensure that whatever we do, digital, BTL, we have to stick to our core objective, we should stick to our AOP, which is the annual operating plan and work on those terms. If at all, we have some products which is justifying to the situation, we should launch it, which where rest of the channels also can marry to marry with it along with the digital and do a sustainable business. Right. Uh, so I think that brings you to this poignant understanding of the fact that no matter what you do at the core of your business plan, at the core of everything lies your vision and what you started out with in context of what you want to do. And I think all plans, everything that you do should be aligned to that. So stepping off and maybe doing it as, you know, perhaps a drive for increased awareness or as a CSR activity wouldn't perhaps mar the brand in a way that, you know, this uh, situation that you spoke about, Zubi. So um, I'm switching to Willie and I'm, Willie, I'm asking you, have you seen any instances uh, or what are your thoughts on this connection between digital and BTL? Yes, there was always a connection uh, in the past in context of events coming up, leveraging digital to talk about a lot of activities that were to come to the fore in the future. So now what do you think this connection is going to look like? What is the BTL digital connection and what does that marriage look like from your point of view? Okay, um, is, um, technology don't just um, give uh, people new way of doing things. It gives people a new way of thinking. So when you are talking about um, digital um, with the traditional, yet we can, the BTL, BTL works both, both traditional and the digital. So in terms of connectivity, we need to really know how we can marry it together by bringing some technology. In terms of you can, we can explore like um, experiential marketing. Experiential marketing can help you to bring them together in the sense that you can bring the fiscal product together. People can have a, um, a, a feel of it also. While you are also connecting it, you can marry. It depends on strategy. Like I already said earlier, you can develop a strategy that can bring the, the experiential marketing, which will help your product for people to really have a physical look of it and also have a physical feel of it, and then connect the, the offline campaign with the data, make it experiential and make it engaging. With that, you can connect both the, the traditional BTR and the digital, you marry them together. Like Ozubi also said, you see, in marketing, you cannot really separate these two together. They work hand in hand for you to really have a a, um, a, a, a better brand position in, in your customer face. You need to see a way you can connect these two together. Awesome. Uh, so now that brings me uh, some great insights there. You spoke about how it makes you think. You spoke about experience. You spoke about engagement. You spoke about how the two can actually leverage this and this unique experience for uh, the brand and the product itself. So I think that brings me now to the question that what do you think is going to happen next? Uh, you know, post-pandemic world, Zubi, I'm going to start with you. 
and I'm going to ask you, what does the post-pandemic world look like for BTL? Um, is it going to be PPE kits for some products or is it going to be a combination of, uh, you know, leveraging what the product has in connection to the digital brand presence that a brand has? So can you tell us a little bit about Simply Asked, what does the future hold? Perfect. Uh, before talking about the future, I have a current question and uh, I know it is not an interactive session, hence I will also answer to it. Do consumers buy product or do consumers buy technology? Consumers buy the product. Consumers uh, engage with technology. Consumers, uh, uh, it's, it's an engagement platform. End of the day, they buy the product and that is what we should, the core thing we should look at. Uh, the current, the earlier time, the present, that is the current situation, and in future, what we need to do is we need to drive the communication either on ground or on air or on social media that what your brand promises, what are the key attributes of your brand, what what is that, what is the VFM value for money which your brand gives to the end consumer. When the and what is see also one thing is in addition to that consumers also are uh, uh, tend to pick up a brand because they see what is the sh uh, share of voice which is uh, like for example if they go on the shelf they will see what is the visibility over there so when it comes to online we since people as uh, rightly said currently they do spend a lot of time on online to purchase we should ensure currently that our share of voice on digital as well as ATL is quite visible because, uh, because at this moment they are not there on ground. So we have to see that we are in the right medium. But however, due to the situation, of course, we cannot put all our monies behind ATL, which is quite an expensive one. Hence, we have to choose the right medium, which is, for example, in digital, they call it as geofencing. Understand your customer, where your customer is, target that customer, talk to him about his products, give a brand recall. Uh, for example, if it is uh, away from FMCG, if you to talk about automobiles, etc., automobiles or anything, etc., of those should they should work on the loyalty programs. They should ensure that there's an engagement through the loyalty programs, etc. So people are connected. So if you are in in connect with the consumers, you don't need to work for your future. We, we as a marketer, we don't need to work for the future because we are already working today. When the future comes, the, the, that is the post-COVID time. We are all ready with the right product for the right consumer. Simple. Okay. So that, that really cuts to the chase and tells you that as this ha has happened over the last couple of months, brands have continued to work on their normal run-of-the-mill uh, you know, business plan and BAU. Whereas at the same time, they've also been agile and trying to meet with the needs and the nuances of the current times. Uh, but as soon as business goes back to business as usual, I think the continuance, um, uh, you know, will come in and jump in. So Willie, a quick question to you. What do you think the future holds? Okay. Um, in, um, the future in terms of the BTR, of course, um, for you not to spend when you return on investment, because every brand objective when coming in terms of marketing. Is to make prime for to sell your brand, promote your product and in return to increase revenue for that brand. So coming to peg of driving the BTR because with digital you will be able to segment and target the audience you okay we lost to, you. to to really analyze and have a total have a good result of your campaign and you'll be able to monitor you'll be able to monitor your campaign if they are doing well at a particular time and also help you to have a good statistics of your customer and your prospect 
So with the coming in the future, um, digital will be the major driver for the BTL. And this, which I hope um, most of the brand have already started doing this too. Okay, great. So that looks at stats, analysis, data, and how to leverage uh, the consumer interfacing that you have directly uh, in context of your digital presence and using that to leverage your uh, BTL activities. So thank you so much, Willie. Uh, Kanika, I'm going to quickly switch over to you because I know we have a lot of audience questions coming in. So why don't you go ahead and take some audience questions and then we'll get back to the conversation. Sure. Thank you so much. I'm sure the audiences are intrigued by, these, by this information and enlightening session. Let me take over the questions. So we have the first question from Priyanka Shrivastav. She's an HR and a media enthusiast. BTL is generally called the shadow of ATL, but smaller brands are enjoying an easy access to consumer, which is not a case with ATL. I think this is more addressed to Juby. Correct. Uh, the question is, I, I would like to correct the question. BTL says, BTL is generally called the shadow of ATL. Mm -hmm. I would reverse it. ATL is the shadow for BTL because BTL. The, BTL, sorry, ATL is the shadow for BTL for the simple reason that BTL gets the product on the shelf. ATL ensures that there's an offtake. Smaller brands or the bigger brands, if route to market, which I have showed in my PPT, uh, in my presentation, I think uh, if could, could, could someone open the uh, uh, third slide of mine. Third slide of my presentation. Great. So here I explained about route to market. The key thing about route to market is it's all about your product availability. For example, if whether it is a small brand or a big brand, if the product is not available, if they do, if they don't ensure that they uh, they keep all the uh, assortment properly, then people might tend to forget the big brands and get to the smaller brands. So it is an ongoing process which I've mentioned. Every day is a great execution. So most important is BTL and we have to ensure that BTL is an ongoing process unlike ATL or uh, social media. All right. So I hope that answers the question. Yeah, pretty well. So let's move on to the next question. That's from Rajesh Singh Prajapati. As per the current and future situations, we cannot live in the traditional ways which we are living up till now. After lockdown opens, we need to start living with the digital technologies. I think this is more attributed to Willie. Willie, would you like to answer this one, please? Yeah. Yes, he has already mentioned that um, he also <laughs> concur on what we have said. Um, after this pandemic, I think um, most business, even workforce, will be driving by digital. Not only promotion of product or services, even the workforce of each of the brand will be driving by digital, by digital technology. So after this lockdown, a lot of opportunity will be open on the digital tech, um, um, te digital and technology um, arena. So is, is every brand are already on their toe for this uh, change. So I'm, I just want to quickly jump in and say, guys, uh, I think uh, what we're trying to do right now is to look at the fact that there's been a continuum of change when it comes to digital and traditional marrying each other and looking at the world in a new way. We've been talking AR, VR. We've been saying digital is is going to, you know, uh, look at different ways and means of doing business uh, to ease off in terms of workforces, to use data, to leverage it. I think the digital transformation con conversation in a VUCA world has been happening for a really, really, really uh, long time. So it's nothing new. I think what the pandemic has done has just accelerated that change towards a future that probably will uh, figure out ways and nuances of getting this to the best way possible for brands to leverage it and for consumers to be able to buy 
and experience products and brands in the best way possible i think uh, i think the future was always going in the same direction this was just an acceleration i think you guys can pitch into that one but uh, just sharing my thoughts on um, on that particular question i agree digital is the future and it will be with the pandemic situation going on digital will take over and is going to accelerate the market for sure shall we move on to the next question yes we have a lot of audiences who are waiting and popping up a lot of questions too that it's from mayank tiwari how do we correlate crm model into the digital btl integration model as future conversions driven business model so this is for both of you because this is okay. a game we are talking about the amalgamation of digital as well as btl so i would like to uh, ask willy to start with the crm model in line with the digital uh, post which i will talk about how customer relationship management model will be in line uh, with the btl part so i would like request willy to start off with okay um this is a fantastic question you see um like we always said um with digital you measure and you get your results it's all about having your customer and you cannot have your customer without having a good crm model in place and with this um coming to digital btl when you are driving a campaign when you are creating a campaign using the btl or using any digital method you want to use when you are coming to when you are promoting your campaign, one thing should be in your mind, how do you get your customer engaged? How do you keep them? So in that case, you need to not only train your campaign and having um, more feasibility online or having customer buy, you can have a customer base because for example, if you run a campaign today and you have 20,000 customer or 20,000 visitor coming to your website or 10,000 people buy into your product. You need to keep those numbers. You need to keep their data. You need to keep the database of those customers, which you can also use in your next campaign. We have what we call looks alike when it comes to campaign, okay. digital campaign. For example, you can target now, you can target five customers and you have five customers. Without five customers, if you have a good CRM model in place, you can use that five customer and get 20 customer of that same nature so a good crm method will be model is a very good strategy when it comes to digital and btl okay uh adding to it uh, i would like to give a live example with uh my experience where when i was working with toyota motors uh we when we launched a, uh one of the models which is uh innova uh we did a drive, uh, uh, a drive with our key uh, distributors uh, in the showrooms, wherein we did an activity wherein you buy in, uh, Innova vehicles and you get get a chance to go to Goa with Amir Khan, who is a brand ambassador, a film actor. You go tend to go with uh, Amir Khan to Goa and do an activity uh, over there. Now, it is about how do we engage the people. See. Get going to going with Amir Khan is an interesting part, but how do we engage the pe uh, people? So we thought our existing customers who are our who has experienced the Toyota vehicles, they refer to ten other customers is a quality ref reference rather than uh, talk talking to new customers. Hence, what we suggested is if your friend if if your friend tends to buy a uh, you know a vehicle. The, uh, for example, I, I I referred a friend, and if my friend happened to buy an Innova, I would get X percentage of discount on maintenance of my car because maintenance of a car, you, you all know, it's quite expensive. So I would get X percentage of discount on maintenance as well as on parts for Innova vehicles. So which added motivation. In addition to it, to talk to the outside world, they said, friends. Buy a Innova, get a chance to go go with Amir Khan, who is a band ambassador, who is well renowned. A, a four day activity in Goa. Uh, you, you and your family can come. All you need to do is buy your love, uh, buy your car, which you always love. It motivated people. Of course, they came in for test drives. 
they like the car they enjoyed the car so then we worked out a complete crm platform which we could check clearly how much of conversions happen because any activity as as i said the conversion rate has to be good so here i i would ensure that i convert my friend i would also ensure that i am because i am benefited from it and i i also get a chance to go with uh, go to goa so crm models can be quite effective in btl provided it is well thought and well executed as i stated before in the start any btl activity has to be simple and executed very very well to get the right output yeah that's interesting thank you there you go the two sides the two sides of the nuances that involve the digital piece on ground product uh, translating right. the nuances around it yeah i think the next questions up so next question is from amit futani who is from bombay dye bombay dye the consumer uh, product companies which have been using btl for ages if they want to shift to a new digital strategy what are the key things that they should be apart that they should do apart from putting their products on amazon ebay and flipkart that's a very interesting one yeah it's like consumer oriented market yeah so i think willy will answer this because he has got hands on experience in india's market also i heard so willy you can go ahead with the i think it will be tips from both of you because it's going to involve btl as well as digital because they they are talking exactly. about making a shift from btl to digital so how exactly it's going to hammer on both the ends so what do you think i have i have uh, sorry i have only one answer to him followed by willy will be answering my one answer is if you stop btl friends it's like stopping your business btl is core for any business uh btl must be there you you cannot you have to continue keeping your stocks on the shelf you have to continue keeping your promoters to uh, educate the consumers what the what kind of products as it is uh, bombay dyeing what kind of clothes what is the material used how etc etc all the why's has to be answered on btl adding to that willy will answer you how through social media you can uh, increase your business further so i uh, i'll willy just before okay. you jump in i'll just jump in with a uh, with an anecdotal example uh, a long a long time ago when scopio was coming up with the latest model uh, that they were going to launch they ran an online campaign where every single day you could go and unveil a small portion of the car right so that was a digital campaign it was planned to be digital so the interesting thing was you could unveil a little bit of it and for automobile enthusiasts imagine you know every single day waiting for a particular time to go see what the new scopio looks like uh, so they did it in segment now i'll ask everybody who loves to drive a car you will never make the choice of a car the decision on what car you're going to buy based on a digital campaign alone and this holds true even for a uh, uh, somebody who is sitting at home trying to decide what kind of dal they want to buy until there is touch and feel or nuance of a product while the digital story looks amazing until you touch feel feel the strength of the wheel behind even if it's a bombay dyeing cloth that you want to buy as as you know a bed sheet that you want to put out on your mattress you will still want to touch it and feel it before you buy it and that's why there are always samples in the stores because the packed ones are always packed and kept but then they will tell you this is the exact same thing it's just a different design and pick this you know this is the count of cotton so touch feel is going to continue to keep relevance and in in all probability it's going to be a lot more intense because people now want to go out and touch and feel and sense and leverage their senses but really what do you have to say about these nuances okay um before putting your uh, moving to online or digital strategy now you need to have the first thing you need to set in place you have to have your digital present now i can tell you there are a lot of product you can put a lot of brand have their product on amazon but they are not making sales now putting your product on amazon is not a guarantee that you sell now you also need to work on your own digital presence because 
eighty percent of customer, eighty one percent of customer search online for a product or services before they buy. Now, if a customer come online and search the name of your product, I see your product on Amazon. The first thing I will go to Google to search for and see reviews on other platform people have. I will go to your social media to check. If you are not effective, I can't, I can't see things people are talking about. That will reduce the number of customers you are going to have. So the first thing you need to put in place, you need to put your digital platform in order. You can have your website in place, have your social media in place before pushing those items out on other digital platform you mentioned. There you go. Um, I don't see Kanika, but can we have the next question? Kanika, do we have you? Okay, can we have the next question up, please? Okay, traditional ROI in comparison to digital ROI. So I think this could be for both of you. Uh, Zubi, what does traditional ROI from a BTL point of view, uh, how does it compare to digital ROI? And the same for Willie. Okay. Um, you see, um, traditionally, this is the advantage of having digital over the traditional BTL. Now, in terms of the return on investment, you cannot really measure. For example, you put your advertisement on TV, you may not really know the number of people that are seeing that your product and coming to buy it. You cannot really measure it. You cannot really measure it. In terms of measurement, digital is the best form of measurement that will guarantee you your return on investment. You can really measure it. Okay. No, so help you. Like we already said, you can analyze them together. So the digital platform will help you to measure your return on investment. On traditionally, we're losing. Uh, really, we're losing. You may not really measure it. You may not buy it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Zubi, if you can just yeah. Uh, yeah. See, first the clear the objective has to be very clear. We have to be very, very clear on the objective. The metrics to measure the success has to be very, very clear. We have to have a clear understanding of it. And last but the most, the timelines. How, how are we going to track it to see the success? In BTL, normally the execution is that which suffers the most. So we have to be very much focused while while we plan and do the entire marketing presentation. BTL is not a success if the execution is not a success. So whatever you plan has to be executed. You should also set action standards basis the ob objectives you have set and you have to have the clear metrics for measuring the success. That is when the plan will be good. If at all, if the action has not been to as, as we planned, we should always have a plan B ready to execute it immediately if there's a if at all there's a failure. That is what I would clearly say uh, the traditional and that's how you get a clear ROI on the same. Yeah, so the return on objective measurement, ROO. Uh, so uh, can we have uh, the next question, please? And if social distancing is the new norm now, how will you lure or bring customers to the dealer's place through BTL or digital? So both either of okay. you. Yeah. Uh, I would start it and then uh, Willie will continue. Uh, of course, since social distancing is the norm, uh, digital will uh, ensure that awareness happens. Digital, ATL, uh, all the ATL activities will ensure that awareness happens. People uh, get induced to go to the trade. However, BTL also, because it is social distancing, social distancing doesn't mean that you are kilometers away. You are just social distance distance. If I'm not wrong is I think 1.5 or two meters distance. So uh, BTL also plays a vital role. Uh, people, once they see the digital, they will like it. They would tend to uh, go and see, for example, if it's an automobile industry, they would like to go and see the car. They would like to touch and feel the experience. So uh, <clears throat> I don't see, I don't see that there would be any difference uh, than earlier, 
that because of this pandemic digital and uh, btl cannot marry with each other they have to still continue marrying with each other yeah so billy uh, what do you have to say have to be okay, um, in terms of yeah um social distancing really affect um the physical or let me say the traditional BTL. but that notwithstanding um the digital we can also we can still use digital to drive for example you can have a video simulation of your product you can have a video simulation of your product let customers see everything 3d we have a lot of technology now that can help now also how you can lure the customer to come to your the dealer place is the major question here now now for that you can come up with some incentive so with some incentive you can come up with some incentive but you can still drive it both the the bit a bit here traditional and also on digital but you have some incentive if you really want them if it's a product that require them coming to your shop so you have to see some other strategies you can add you can add some fiscal incentive maybe discount on it when they come to the shop and buy that will help and also so make sure that you put some technology in place that will that will secure their protection like for example now we have you see that's why i said technology is very very good you can see coming to shop if i put online that you are coming to our shop we have a tunnel sanitizer so once you come to our shop we will sanitize you 100 percent you are protected with that customer want to come to my shop what if I now come up with a sanitizer, a toner sanitizer that have a very beautification on it? You see, some customer will want to have experience of it. Right. Okay. Adding, adding to it, one, yes. yeah, one, one, adding to it, uh, whether BTL, B, currently BTL or digital, I would say it is country specific or region specific. For example, if you see, in African markets today, the retail shops are closed. If you go to Tanzania, uh, Tanzania is open, Uganda is closed. If you go to Nigeria, it's closed. Hence, digital is, people spend a lot of, uh, brands are spending a lot of money in digital to ensure that we are communicating to their consumers. And if you see, in these markets, people spend a lot of time on digital and conversions and life and engagement are happening quite much better. However, if you come to Middle East market, uh, or especially like Dubai, etc. Uh, BTL is very, still going very strong. People are going to supermarkets and purchasing, unlike what's happening in the Africa. So I, I cannot comment much about India, but uh, it is specific to region or the geography you are from. You have to accordingly ensure whether BTL you focus more or you focus on digital more. It depends completely on the geography to uh, take the plan. Okay. Um, that was very thought provoking, uh, Julie and Willy. Let's move on to the next question since we have a time crunch at this point in time. So, the next set of audiences from uh, Ruchi Kalpatru post COVID, brand, irrespective of their product category, need to communicate with empathy and care. However, digital as a medium has always been more conversion driven. How do you think marketers can strike the balance right? That's a pretty interesting one. Uh, can I just start on and then really continue on this? Sure. Okay. Uh, product categories needs to communicate with empathy and care. That is something which is from ages. Uh, any brand has to show empathy, care, and trust because people spend money uh, earlier days, if you see, uh, there were, if you could get your uh, oil or dal without a brand. But these days, people tend to buy oil, oil or a dal which has a brand because they have an empathy, they have a care, and they, they have a trust on it. So, in the current trend, it is that we have to have a brand should give empathy, care, and trust. And I think it will continue for also forever and through digital i'm sure willy will be able to explain further okay so in in, in terms of um, digital 
like we all know that um digital drive conversion very well that is certain now um having the product category needed to communicate with empathy and care that also can be driven by digital like i always said your yeah, communication you need to when you, when you have a good communication strategy in place talking to your brand you also study your co consumer um trend and also study them and know their behavior pattern with that you can create you can create a communication that will enhance empathy that will also help it balance the both the the, the, the marketer balance the, the, the right conversion from even the, the, the traditional way to the digital. So when you put a good what I'm trying to say here is when you have a good communication in place, the conversion will still be driven. So um I just I'll just pitch in and say this quickly. I think brands have leveraged digital as a means of communication really, really well when it comes to storytelling and driving trust, empathy, and care. There have been a series of only digital campaigns that have actually been change makers in uh, many nuances and forms, some not even connected directly to the product, but to the brand's vision of actually being the change in terms of social impact. So if you look at brands leveraging digital, I think there are enough stories of brands actually leveraging digital, not only in terms of conversion, but also in terms of conversation and communication. And so. Absolutely, yes. I think the next question is up. Yeah. It's from Rajesh Sin, uh, Prajapati. What will be the modes of product promotions, product placements, and competitive advantages in digital marketing technologies? How to use it? OK. Now, um, can I answer? Can I take this? Sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the whole idea of um, putting your product or your brand on a digital platform is for promotion. Now, promoting your product, we have different ways of promotion. We have different method of promotion based on your target audience. You need to do a customer insight, know where your customer resides. Are you going to just go to social media and do a, a post, you boost your post, or you want to use a search engine so that when customers are searching for your product, you would land them at your website. So you need to study and know the products you have, the product also, and also understand your target audience. With your target audience, you know the right placement. Now, a lot of brands waste money advertising online at the end of the day, you don't have a good return on investment. Now, studying your product, studying your customer will help you to know the right placement, will help you to know the right channel, the right platform. You need to communicate your product or your brand to your customer. Great. Thank you. That's right. Yeah. I mean, the set of target audiences that how we actually analyze the behavior aspect to whom server is targeted, it needs to be analyzed properly before actually the placement goes on. Yes. The next question is by Kavita. Post COVID, what are the skills one should see for oneself to sustain in the marketing sector? What's the other options for marketing people if you suggest us? I mean, that's what everybody wants to know in the current mm -hmm. scenario. <laughs> Great. Uh, as a marketer, the, the most important thing is we need to learn and develop. Learning, the more we learn, the more we are aware of things, the more we are strong, we know our product, we know our consumer, the more we, so if, if we get time, we should ensure that we, we go to the retail floor uh, and see how it's how it happens. But whether it's for customers, on ground. So it's not that uh, you have uh, if there is COVID, you sit in the houses. If you if you're really getting the answer, there are some discussions that people are getting bored sitting at home. Take this opportunity to go to the retail outlet. 
protect keep be well protected but go to the retail outlet spend time to understand what consumers are observing spend time to see what are the things they are looking at so the uh, that is very important one has to keep learning and then developing himself what are the uh, uh, some of the options which i would like uh, or as a marketer one should do is see how is the trend what are the keep studying various trends what how the world is going to evolve like for example today sanitizers uh, there are reports saying that sanitizers and hygiene products will be on top priority so look at if if your brand is a uh, personal care brand and also in addition to personal care if your brand uh, if you if you have product range which is into uh, which you can enter into uh, new segments which is almost in line with your current business please do look at look at new opportunities because the trends which people were buying today might not be post uh, covid the people for sure i'm sure that for the next one or two years from today people will be conscious about how to spend hence look at those necessities and enter into those pro uh, products provided they are in, in your portfolio range and enter into that and see what is the uh, also study the product life cycle for it because when you are launching it unlike uh, for example gucci i am uh, just giving an example gucci during this uh, situation they entered into uh, making masks it's a fashion brand but many of the fashion brands entered into making mask and making that mask they are also building the brand recall in the minds of the consumer when a person goes to pick up gucci uh, mask he will also tend to buy uh, the uh, apparels from gucci so ensure that whatever you do has to be a sustainable long term business unlike i repeated some, i mentioned some time back if you are a biscuit company do not enter into a sanitizer i wouldn't uh, find it uh, quite advisable however if you have the uh, skill and the if you can extend your uh, uh, brands further please uh, look at opportunities and i still say uh, currently during covid and post covid there are a lot of companies who are taking very very good opportunities and doing extremely well so you don't need to for example if your current x business is not doing well focus on your y business try to grow that business L look at uh, introducing a uh, new range and end of the day you are supposed to look at your as a marketer we are supposed to focus on our aop which is the annual operating plan so if you are able to hit on your aop you are a strong marketer because you move you are agile to the current situation and you are well prepared for the future situation okay okay can really? i come in that's right okay yeah. yeah for you to be a successful um, marketer as a marketer you are positioning yourself you want to sell product you want to sell your brand to your audience the first skill you need to do you need to understand the product the ability for you to understand the product you sell, understand your brand, that is key. You need to have a good skill in researching. As a good marketer, you need to be good in researching. You need to search and know the marketing trends that are changing because marketing trends keep evolving. So you need to have also another important skill will be recruitment because you are recruiting, you are bringing people to buy your product. Also, you have to have a self-confidence. You have to have a leadership skill. There are a lot of skills you need. You have to know the risk management. You have to know the communication skill. The communication is very, very vital. You know to have... Okay. So... Uh, to communicate to your customer. You have to present it to a customer. You can sell it. So communication is very, very important also for a good marketer. You need to know how to communicate with your audience, with your team, your client, with your managers. So communication is very vital. You have to also have a negotiation skill. You have to 
be, be able to negotiate as a good co marketer need to have a good negotiation skill you need to be able to negotiate with your client for them to buy your product so now also you can have um what we call um feedback or mentorship also mentor other people that are you have you recruit also to help you and have a feedback system in place which is very very important in marketing have a good feedback system in place get to know what your customer are talking when you are talking to your customer you need to communicate with them and also listen to them have a good feedback system in place with that will help you in your marketing really so that's great so uh, the same thing we need to keep learning and developing further guys yeah. uh, i just want to pitch in here and say uh, you know when brands are looking at post covid times there are brands like uh, zubi said who are doing really well uh, whose business life plans are in, in line uh, but if you look at jobs also there are a lot of job losses on the other side i think simply put what anybody will be looking for in somebody that they want to hire and this is not specific to marketing alone is the ability to multitask and do multiple roles all together if you have uh the ability to be a subject matter expertise in one area but you also have the ability to quickly learn and pick up new things uh create a digital marketing standpoint or an seo or associated skills i think what people will be looking for in the new future are people who have multiple skills or who can develop and grow multiple skills and always only two things uh, like one of my ex bosses used to say the right attitude and the right aptitude and you will land a job role that you want in terms of uh, the career path that you want so i think it's it's fairly simple people are looking for people who can do multiple things and uh, you know chase the goal so to speak absolutely you guys touched on a lot of many critical areas that the audiences wanted to know so let me just quickly take you to the next question that's from the pariche parivesh in context of a service industry which medium would be more effective post covid digital or btl and what point you consider while making a marketing strategy let me add a little bit more to it and what do you think will be the most cost effective way to because the considering the fact that the industry is undergo a lot of revenue issues and all that starting from the next quarter onwards so what do you think how do you foresee which will be the next arena to excel so uh, when it comes to service industry i would say i would, I would always say that a cost effective medium of uh, communication today and way forward is digital and maybe in that case billy can give us small uh, insight on it maybe a one or two minutes insight on it and we can move to the next Willie, over to you. Okay, the 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 answer, yeah, the answer is digital, post conflict, marketing medium you are going to use, be it the service industry or whatever is digital, and that will help you. You need to know strategy you are going to use. So you need to get getting. strategy comes you study your brand study your product study your customer then you develop the strategy you know what your customer wants you develop a strategy based on how you can sell the product to them so the most important thing there is to understand that your product understand that your brand and understand your customer the target audience who are you who do you want to communicate to who are you selling the product to who are you selling the services to so you need to understand them once you understand them you have the right method of approach which can be used by which you can use through the digital platform but you need to understand your customer understand your product then you come up that will help you with the strategy so you cannot really have a good strategy if you don't understand the brand and you don't understand your customer insight i think uh, uh quickly to uh, wrap on that question uh if you look at uh, if you look at what's going on right now i think brands have stuck to digital because you know that's easy to continue to keep engagement with your customers whether it's an email communication or whether it's social media whether it's investing in seo and also the spends on digital are far more uh, you know controllable in terms of you can choose to whether spend versus planning an event and running an event Uh, so if you look at it most businesses especially in the service industry currently are sticking to digital 
Now that will change based on the way uh, forward and uh, how quickly uh, the relaxations will uh, get off in terms of uh, regulation and all of those things. Uh, but I think what is interesting here is I think we have four different geographies uh, sharing the same screen. And I think uh, we have somebody from Africa, from Dubai, from US and India. And if you look at it, I think everybody's more or less speaking the same language and saying the same thing so world over. I think this has unified us in more ways than we can imagine. Marketing is, is pretty much unified. It's just the languages yeah. or the way that we communicate changes. That's yeah. it. But it has okay. the same, same line of business, same how do we actually execute it. Yeah. Yes. Correct. It's pretty much generic. OK, so let me just hang in here. And we'll take up the, all the rest of the questions offline, because we have a time crunch, at, time crunch at this given point in time. Thank you for the stimulating session. It was pretty much grateful. And I'm sure the warm cast will be taken up very much. And the audiences are intrigued today. We explore the new possibilities of marketing opportunities. We look forward to implementing each one of them as the lockdown eases off and the let's rise up the brands again thank you so much and let me quickly introduce uh, ashish singh who's the founder of the world of marketing he's going to say a few words ashish are you there hi ashish how are you doing hi i'm good thank you So, hello everyone. Namaste. Hi. And thank you. Thank you everyone to see our live podcast today. How was it? Well, the audiences can't speak at the moment, so they can't really answer. <laughs> How was it? Okay, okay. See, the topic of today came from my, uh, one of my blogs, which I wrote in last year. Digital is the new BTO. You can refer, uh, you can check this uh, on my LinkedIn profile. Uh, but last week, when Mr. Prashan Chilapalli was the guest on our webcast, Warmcast, sorry, he said one sentence that uh, the entire marketing budget now shifting from BTL to digital. And after that, I got so many calls from the BTL marketers. Like one of my friend, Munish Maria from uh, UP East, India UP East, uh, he, uh, he, he was a uh, BTL manager of Dish TV. So he called me. To have a conference like that. So after that, we have decided to have the webcast. Then I remember my friend Juby and Willy, and we have planned this webcast with export like Juby and Willy for trade marketing, BTL, and digital marketing. I hope you like it. Now onwards, I will mention the name and the achievements of the group members on the uh, last week and last month. I'll just uh, speak up three names. First, Mr. Lokesh Vasist, he has started his own venture called ChandanRoli.com. And it is a dedicated portal for spiritual travels and tourism. So if anyone wants to visit Northeast India, suppose, for example, I mean, you can go to South India also, please get in touch with Lokesh on ChandanRoli.com. Uh, my friend Parichai Paivish, he has made uh, new updates in his venture, uh, tailorsbook.com. So if you want to see and if you want to enjoy local and regional content of Indian cinema, please visit tailorsbook.com. Uh, my one of my friend, Mr. Francis, who is the founder of a tech company called Visionary Technologies. Visionary Technologies Limited in Cameroon. He is looking for new investment in his company. So if you want to invest, connect to Mr. Francis. All the details will be uh, shared uh, with this online content after that. We have initiated a new uh, initiative uh, for the serious job seekers. So we will have a dedicated program next week. There will be four uh, serious job seekers and a Chief Marketing Officer he will be there to ask the questions. It will be like a live interview and an opportunity to showcase their skills to the world of marketing. 
there are two three ways to find a job first job portals like nokia.com in india like uh, networking uh, sites like linkedin and third is personal contacts but if we if you have to get the job on a serious note then we have to do something else we have to showcase our talent so we have decided this thing to help a serious job seekers beyond the networking see in india or anywhere networking uh, interview is speed dating no matter how knowledgeable you are but if you can't perform in those 10 minutes you cannot find a job you cannot get a job sometimes good actors get the job because they know how to act in those 10 minutes those 10 minutes are very important you must have seen that today we have uh, showcasing the name of the job seekers at the below of our webcast this way their name location their domain and other details you know will be shown to the thousands of marketers maybe the future employers our uh, last webcast as i remember uh, reached 4400 uh, marketers yesterday so this is our one initiative our next feature will be in the uh, next uh, regional content i mean from the next week we will have a, a half an hour program in the regional content because as uh, kanika says uh, marketing and music does not have any language yep so a marketing discussion only in the regional language it will be only in the regional language suppose if it will be in tamil then everything will be in tamil flavors regional speakers like if it's in chinese or malayalam then we will have the guest in marketing wizards from the tamil and that language only and we will talk about the solutions of that language now i'll come on the thank you note i just prepare a page it is ubi antony and willy thank you uh, to come on warmcast and talk about uh, the details of uh, digital marketing and the btl thank you thank you jubi thank you jubi is our founding member jubi you are our founding member i remember you have joined world of marketing in feb 2016 me and dinesh and you uh, special thanks to shreya shreya krishna i mean in the i mean uh, i spoke to you uh, two days back and you accepted this uh, to become a moderator you are a part of our group now so thanks ria thanks really my pleasure thanks ash uh thanks kanika i mean being in usa and the time difference we coordinated well thank you thank you much appreciated uh neelam again a talent uh, talent warrior and a super mom thank you for your cooperation paiche for all back end uh, work and the working day and night for world of marketing along with tellersbook.com <laughs> navin thakur thank you for all technical stuff and for preparation great job sir uh sneha you are an amazing team member the last moment you coordinated with all the teams thank you for that lokesh like always great job ganesh mahajan and rakhi puri do i need to say anything do i need to say thanks Okay, Trichita, amazing job, thank you. Anya, for social media support, thank you. Tanta, thanks. And our friend from Bangladesh, Mr. Shakhavat Munna, thank you for your help in launching the regional chapters of Bangladesh. It's already got 50 plus members, seriously, 50 plus members in a week. Thank you. Uh, and. I would also uh, like to thank our core group members, uh, like uh, our uh, guest from last webcast, Anvita Prabhakar, who was who is the uh, VP Marketing with Aditya Pirla, uh, and being an active member, correcting and suggesting with her valuable ideas. Thank you, thank you, Anvita. As I always say, this is not a networking community. World of marketing, this is not a networking community. Yes. It is not. It is beyond networking. So, world of marketing by marketers of marketing things, but it's for all. 
our vision is marketing for all yes marketing for all everyone is a marketer and marketing is a very uh, noble job similarly medical defense and uh, teaching marketing is a very noble job the marketers always try to bring better and better things and services to the people we are great so i request to all marketers please join us join our groups community follow us on uh, social media it's a platform where you can okay so talent your skills and the world of marketing acknowledge your achievements and bring forward to the millions and millions of the marketers so if anyone wants to come as a guest want to speak about uh, different steps of marketing uh, digital marketing retail marketing uh, trade marketing anything about marketing please just call us anything about admins and uh, the members so thank you we'll meet up uh, next week next sunday 7:30 not 7:30 7 o'clock indian time so for that note thank you thank you thank you everybody take care bye bye thank you everyone bye bye bye